Hello, I am the Standard Critic. Today, I'm reviewing a film that thinks it's funny when really it's more depressing than PTSD. This is Loose Cannons. I've never seen a movie with such an inconsistent tone. It doesn't know if it wants to appeal to kids or to the imbecilic grown-ups. The monster behind this monstrosity is Bob Clark, who, on the one hand, made great films like A Christmas Story and Murder by the Cree, but, on the other hand, he made questionable choices like Rhinestone and Baby Geniuses. Just hope there aren't any talking babies in this movie, because that would be really scary. Let's take a look at the body cop movie, Loose Cannons. The movie opens with a spooky atmosphere, as we see a group of men dressed up as Alice in Wonderland characters. Why are they in disguise, you might ask? Because the movie says so. No questions, no answers, okay? Huh? I know you are out there, Stickler. Come out, come out, wherever you are, my little Ingmar Bergman. That lovely agent from the German government was very upset with you when you double-crossed him. Ah! Oh, God! Let's scream to give away our position. Two of the men escape, but the other two are killed, as we cut to the film's main star, Gene Hackman, playing a cop who isn't Popeye Doyle. You know what this car represents? It represents your dick. This Woody represents what you want your dick to be. You ought to be driving a compact. Uh, Hyundai or something like that. Just think of the erection a limousine driver would have. Wow. You're disgusting, Wesket. This doesn't represent my dick. It represents order. You should write a book, Westcott. Me and my lobotomy. He is sent to investigate the assassinations of last night, where he meets his new partner, played by Dan Aykroyd. What's with this guy? Who is he? That man possesses the keenest analytical mind I've ever seen, bar none. Dan Aykroyd's character has a power of deduction so brilliant that even Sherlock Holmes would question his intelligence. The launch came up out of the water at high speed, sailed through all this debris here, and then, before final impact, two victims were thrown clear. Someone tormented the German gentleman who was dressed as the Cheshire Cat. He taunted him from here all the way over to here, then shot him. There's a knife on the breadboard with butter on the right side of the blade. Because he used it with his left, it's highly unlikely that a left-handed man would shoot himself in the right side of his head. How do you know the gunfire came from this alleged powerboat? Number two, how do you know anybody escaped, let alone two people? Number five, how do you know this guy was German? How do you know that he was tormented? And finally, how do you know any of this shit? But my dear Watson, it's just that obvious. Well, I guess I'll go back to the lab and see how they're doing on the other bodies. Yeah, this guy is sharp. Oh, yeah? There's something wrong with that dude. So the two work together as they have the typical conversation of most body cop movies. I bet you don't like cigarettes, do you? Give off bad vibes? No, they make my eyes burn and my lungs hurt. Is this a cat? No, that's a giraffe. Will your cat always be coming on assignments with us? Oh, just very special ones. They've had a long conversation without saying anything funny. That's quite impressive. Captain said to tell you they've identified the owner of the boat those guys were killed in. Hmm. Harry Gutterman, Harry the Hippo. He owns a little S&M club down in the industrial district. They try to find one of the survivors of the attack who is hiding at a strip club because what's a bad movie without a strip club? You know, I came here to see Mr. Gutterman. Hey, you fix that drink for me. You all. No drinks without a membership card. Right now, I want to go through that green door. Hey, you! Hold it! Hold it! Both parties misunderstand one another, resulting in a fight. <laughs> That's actually Dan Aykroyd's reaction the moment he realized what movie he got himself into. Please, thank you very much. I'm Albert Clendenning. I'm the director of sports and recreation today. Put him up, put him up. I have no idea what's going on. I'll put you with my eyes closed. <laughs> I, I don't really know this guy. You gotta ask yourself one question. You feel lucky, punk. Do you?
You do not have copyright use of that line. Out of the west, through a cloud of dust, with a hearty high silver! His tactic is to lower their guard by behaving like a complete idiot and then attack them. Okay. Hold it! Hold it. Hold it. Get up! Come on. Hold it right there, Butterball. Come on, get, get over there. Now it's beginning to look like the French connection. Coincidence? Don't move or I'll shoot. Are you guys really cops? I'm a cop, I don't know what the hell he is. They finally meet the man they were looking for, played by Dom DeLuise, who is desperate for protection. What'd you see that makes these guys want to kill you? A movie! A movie? Yes, a movie. A porno movie, that's all. Triple X dub. Only this one starred, guess who? Hitler and a couple of Nazi guys. A porn movie featuring Adolf Hitler? Okay, you got my attention. What are you talking about? I mean, everybody who saw the movie is dead, except for me and Steckler. But the killers from before catch up with them. Ooh. Now I know where they spent most of the budget. Was it worth it? Was it? This causes Dan Ackroyd to go mad again, just when he is asked to drive to catch the killers. Professor Sulu, set a course for the Klingon battle fleet. No, 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 no damage report. No, you're not Captain Kirk. I'm Scott in engineering. Oh my Captain Bones, the ship's medic. <laughs> Would you believe me if I told you that Dan Ackroyd used to earn a living by playing these type of characters? This car represents Gene Hackman's dick getting ruined. The killers get away as we later find out that Ackroyd's character is the commissioner's nephew and that he's been in a mental institution for over a year. He went undercover. He got picked up by a couple of Colombians. Well, you know those bastards. They tortured that kid, Mac, for two days solid and left him for dead. And that's when this personality disorder business started. Interesting plot device, but now you're making me wish I was re-watching me, myself, and Irene. So, if I don't take the kid, you're gonna give me Wesker, huh? Have to, pal. He's the senior man. They still have to work together as we cut to a politician named Kirk von Metz, who is running for Chancellor of Germany. Are your viewers aware that I was in prison? you were sentenced for participating in the September plot. Which was? Which was a plot to assassinate Hitler. And guess who happens to work for Kirk von Metz, the neo-Nazi behind the killings? We hired you to get the film back, not to start the Holocaust. It must stop. You look at me, you fool. I didn't let him steal it. Remember when this was a bright and colorful comedy? Now it has the music and lighting of a Dario Argento scarefest. Touch me again. Then schneid ich deine Finger up. Gene Hackman spends the night at Dan Ackroyd's very white apartment. I guess I keep this apartment white because I really don't know who I am. It's kind of like a blank piece of film waiting to be exposed to what I was before my trauma or what I've become since I was last myself. By the way, have you noticed something missing in these conversations like, I don't know, humor? We have a lot in common. Hmm? Yeah. For every mood that I'm in, you have a complete personality to fit it. <sighs> well, thanks for trying to understand. This isn't funny. This is serious talking. Want to hear a tape? Yeah, what do you got? Earth, forest, beach, beach. How about some proper jokes for a change? When I start these personalities, sometimes it's like I'm kind of having nightmares. Sort of weird, you know? Mm -hmm. I doubt I'll do anything violent, but uh, lock the door just in case. Ten minutes ago, Dan Aykroyd was behaving like a complete nutter, which was being played for cheap laughs. I don't mind comedies with serious moments, but what is this? Have a little bit more consistency with the tone you're trying to establish. Land jet! Prepare to land jet! <laughs> Ah, now it's back to being ridiculous. It came out of nowhere, but I'll take it. You like rats? You like roaches? You like bugs of all descriptions? There's something wrong with that dude. They go to the German Embassy White House to seek answers. If you would please wait here. 
Uh, here? Yes, sir. Right here. Yes, sir. Right there. Huh? Bob Smiley, Assistant Deputy Director of the FBI. I came down here to meet with an official of the German government. Now, why am I speaking to the FBI agent? Mac, 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 Mac. Bob, 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 what? Again, the humorous dialogue doesn't fit well with this supposed comedy. I actually wouldn't be surprised if this was originally meant to be a serious cop movie. The writer realized it was too lame, so he threw in the split personality subplot at the last minute. A very bizarre choice, but that would explain everything. You boys have a nice day. They also notice a woman following them, played by Nancy Travis. I'd say she's about 5'7". DIA, CIA, or NSA operative. Recruited out of Bennington College, Vermont. The jumper he's wearing, hardly worn. Clearly he's uncomfortable in it. Maybe it's because of the material. More likely the hideous pattern suggests it's a present, probably Christmas. Also has a cat named Bootsy. What? Just kidding, Mac. How the heck would I know who she is? Huh. Okay, that was funny. I'll give him that. They realize Dom de Luis is no longer safe, so they ask him to take them to Steckler, the man who possesses the Nazi porn movie. When are you gonna meet Steckler to buy this film? Tomorrow. Where? I own a bath house in New York. Let's go. I am not going! I swear to God, if I get killed, I'm gonna sue you guys. It's America. People will sue over anything, even from beyond the grave. Paul? What? Someone we'd rather not see right now. Jeez. The FBI want to take Dom De Luis away in order to avoid an international scandal, which forces the three fat musketeers to go on the run. They decide to go to New York by train, but have to get rid of the agents. Hey, that looks like Bob Smiley! How about not revealing your position or getting on the train with the agent still looking at you? They will find out its destination. Can somebody tell me what the hell's going on here? Hold it, sweetheart. Alice, cover that dude. Rebecca Lohengrin. Call me Riva. Nancy Travis and her men are actually Israeli agents. As long as Christopher Lambert is not among them, I'll be fine. How much do you know about all this? It turns out that the film contains evidence proving that Kirk von Metz was a Nazi officer. Just that uh, Hitler was a very naughty boy and that von Metz was his buddy. Exactly. We believe von Metz was a favorite of Hitler's. In fact, he may have been the one chosen to help Hitler commit suicide. If the rumors about von Metz are so big, how did he manage to even become a candidate? In the land of Braveheart, the Nazis catch up with them. You probably shouldn't have given away your destination to those agents. They manage to board the train, but Mad Ackroyd is able to knock them out. He had plenty of time to shoot him, and yet he just stood there and took it. In real life, this is what would have happened. But of course not, that would make sense. They might surrender, but I wouldn't count on it. They have no way of escape, so what do they do? Kill themselves. I fly to sailor man. Yes, we get it, Ackroyd. You do voices. Please shut up. They manage to escape and make it to the bathhouse in New York, where Dom de Luis has a suspicious room full of weapons. Every health spa in New York so equipped? Hey, we got a lot of competition in this business. Max! <laughs> a two-way mirror, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. They meet Steckler, but they decide to check to see if the Nazis have followed them. <laughs> This results in a shootout where they rip off John Woo's slow motion. Stegler gets fatally shot, but not before telling them where he hid the movie. At Grand Center Station. What? Locker. How did they know there wasn't a wall behind the mirror? I mean, they had a 50 50 chance of being wrong. 
They are taken hostage, and this is when the movie starts to become unnecessarily dark. We've got a Grand Central Station! Uh, laugh. It's funny because he got shot. Get a pliers! They are taken to Grand Central Station with the Israeli agents behind them. Up Jay Anister Bay. They try to escape, but get separated. Another reference to the French connection, except that it's Gene Hackman who gets on the train instead of Fernando Ray. Well, Nancy Travis is being useless right now. What's going on? Let's go. Grand Central Station. Yes, sir. Let's go. There's a cab in front of me. Push it out of the way. Hey, hey. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen, a guy who disregards the well-being of other people. He makes it back and tries to take them out with some Tom and Jerry gags, but tell me if they are funny or horrifying. Are you trying to be light-hearted or comedically dark? You can't be both. You won't stop me, Hackman! Steckler said it was in Locker 64. 64. Workers Area B. Okay. Locker 64. She's still being useless. He gets the movie from the locker but is cornered by the bad guy as Aykroyd reminds the audience that he can still do imitations. Fluffer and fuck it, Dad! Huh? Well, excuse me! This distraction allows Gene Hackman to throw the film into the main lobby for the Israeli agents to pick up. And just to make the tone even more inconsistent, they play the scene in slow motion and with creepy music. I am not making this up, just watch. And how do they show the villain's death? Unless the director thought he was back doing Black Christmas, there's no reason for this to be so violent. So the Israelis really show the movie to the public, and no, they're not building up to anything funny. Here one can see Hitler kneeling before the young soldier chosen to deliver the coup de grace. That soldier is none other than Kurt von Metz. We don't even get to see the movie properly. It's in the background and out of focus. A lot of build-up for nothing. Irrefutable evidence. So our heroes are in hospital recovering from their injuries, leading to our final scene. Riva, she recruited Harry and I to be secret agents with the Israeli government, you know, the, the Mossad. Naturally, I have to convert to Judaism right away. The only thing I'm worried about is uh, I have to be circumcised. Oh, I do not consent. Oh, Mac. You know why we make such good partners? <laughs> You're crazier than I am. I knew that. So just to remind you, this movie has dialogue like this. When I start these personalities, sometimes it's like I'm kind of having nightmares. Sort of weird, you know? Has comedic scenes like these. <laughs> and it also has scenes like this one. Not a good combination. Who was this movie made for? It's too violent for children, too stupid for teenagers, and too boring for adults. Gene Hackman and Dan Aykroyd don't have much chemistry together. The split personality doesn't work well into the story. The villains are not interesting as they only appear when it suits the story. And furthermore, I can't believe they didn't make the Nazi sex take funny. I'm sorry, but that was a comedic opportunity they didn't take advantage of. When you have a film with these ingredients and it doesn't taste good, then you know you failed.